Shalom. Our Torah portion this week is Emor. Let's take a look at chapter 24, verse 10 in the book of Leviticus. There came out among the Israelites a man whose mother was Israelite and whose father was Egyptian. And a fight broke out in the camp between that half Israelite and a certain Israelite man. The son of the Israelite woman pronounced the name in blasphemy, and he was brought to Moses. Now his mother's name was Shlumi, daughter of Debri of the tribe of Dan. And he was placed in custody until the decision of the Eternal should be made clear to them. And the Eternal One spoke to Moses, saying, Take the blasphemer outside the camp, and let all who were within hearing lay their hands upon his head, and let the community leadership stone him. Now, the young man mentioned in this passage I just read, blast themed that is spoke ill of the God of Israel because he was rejected by his mother's family, the tribe, the tribe of Don. His father was an Egyptian and his mother was an Israelite. And we know that there were Egyptians who left Egypt with their Jewish neighbors and in some cases their Jewish spouses. Now the irony here is that this young man whose father wasn't Jewish and his mother was Jewish, the irony here is that in later generations, uh, a person's claim to, uh, to Jewish heritage would lay with the mother's lineage, meaning uh, someone with a non-Jewish father and a Jewish mother would be considered Jewish and would be accepted by the community and embraced as one of its members. But the young man in this story was told in no uncertain terms that he could not pitch his tent in, uh, in the camp of the Danites. He was considered other. Without, he was considered without empathy without any consideration for what he shared with those who were rejecting him. His feelings were never taken into consideration. If we were to write a modern midrash about this story, we might, we might suggest that, we, uh, that he spoke Hebrew with an Egyptian accent. Perhaps the way he dressed was a little bit different from uh, his... Um, uh, Israelite relatives. If we fleshed out his personality a little bit, we might conclude that all he wanted was to be accepted as the unique individual he was and to be embraced by the community into which his mother was born. I think we can all understand, without justifying necessarily, but we can all understand his anger, the anger that led to his blaspheming the God of Israel. We might also speculate what might have happened if the tribe of Dan had acted differently, if they had embraced him as a brother and allowed him to be part of their community. I doubt whether the story would have ended so tragically. This story is a cautionary tale of what happens when groups of people do not empathize with each other. This is a cautionary tale that tells us what can happen when groups of people see only what makes them different from one another and ignore their common humanity. Opening up oneself to the pain of the other is the first step to understanding. It's the first step on the road to reconciliation and peace. I have been captivated this week by the news report of a group of Palestinians, Palestinian university students, who visited 
uh, the Auschwitz concentration camp just a few weeks ago. Professor Mohammed Dejani of the Al-Quds University in Jerusalem took a group of 27 of his students uh, to that site where as many as 2,000 Jewish people were murdered. He said, quote, in my community, you see a lot of ignorance of the Holocaust, denial of the Holocaust. People don't want to recognize the suffering of the other, end of quote. Professor Dejani and the 27 students who went to Poland with him have been roundly criticized in the Palestinian community for having sold out to the Jews as if admitting that the Jewish people suffered horribly during the Second World War somehow makes them traitors uh, to their own people and to the cause of establishing an independent Palestinian state. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been with us for decades. It seems to be one of the most intractable conflicts of all times. Two people laying claim to the same land, both denying the other's attachment to that small strip of land, often ignoring the pain and the suffering of the other. Now, I'm not naive. I don't believe that simply recognizing our shared humanity and acknowledging each other's suffering will magically bring peace between our people and the Palestinians. But I do believe that it would be a step in the right direction, perhaps smoothing the rough and rocky road to peace. Do you remember that movie, To Kill a Mockingbird? It was an amazing movie. Gregory Peck played uh, the key role. He played the role of Atticus Finch, a white man in the segregated South who was trying to do the right thing. He was trying to understand what African Americans were going through. He said, uh, some, he said some beautiful words in the course of that movie. He said, you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. Those words are so true. Well, I hope that you will read this week's Torah portion and come to your own conclusion. Shabbat Shalom.